happy. So, Rob, let's go to the NBA. And last night, great night for Kevin Durant. Yep. Uh, he drops 22 points, which is actually low for him, but still, 22 but points. But what did he need? Eight, In right? a victory, he only needed eight. Yeah, to pass Shaquille O'Neal and be, and obviously the legendary Shaquille O'Neal. And um, in a victory over Philadelphia, Kevin Durant became the eighth leading scorer of all time. And as we said last night, Rob, Durant is sixth on the all-time list of points per game. 27.3. LeBron is right behind him at 7, 27.1. Of course, LeBron, the only player in NBA history to ever surpass 40,000 points, the all-time leading scorer. So um, you've got some interesting thoughts about Durant, though. You know, he's 35. He's still got some years to play, playing great this year, averaging 27.7 points a game. Um, but, you know, we're entering the latter chapters, if you will, of his career, and you've got some interesting thoughts. Yeah, I, I just think there's a, a story, uh, a legacy. Uh, when you look at his career, and it's not just from like – some cranky sports writers, Chris. You know, it's some fans, it's some former players, it's other players who, who look at when he went to Golden State. It's the I like you know, I call Kevin Durant the Masot. The most sensitive of all time. <laughs> He's the Masot. And yes. not the GOAT. And he is, you know, Chris, he responds to everybody. What I, I get it. he grew up in that era of social media, and that's how people express themselves. But it comes off as if, uh, you know, he's sensitive if people say stuff about him. And I don't think he gets the credit. I think people know he's a great player, don't get me wrong. But I do think that he's a tick under because of the other baggage, if you will. And when I talk about baggage, I'm talking about uh, how his career played out, um, I still to this day, Chris, say so. You're uh, not talking about the burner accounts, and I'm just saying, asking for trades and things like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm just saying like those things that that go along with the injuries that he's had later in his career, and then the the wanting to be traded and moving around a lot. Like like I, I always say, if Kevin Durant retires and they put, you know, it's not the same way in baseball where you wear somebody's hat, the team you 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 most are identified with. Right, I, I think Kevin Durant's been around so much that that you take a look at him and you go, if I had to pick, I wouldn't pick the Warriors, even though he won two championships. His well, own, you know, to me, and the he, only there's only two options. OKC is it Seattle the or Warriors OKC? Warriors are OKC. Yeah, that's the, it. Not Seattle. No, no, no. The no, Warriors just, are OKC. Right. I mean, I you could pick the Warriors. That's where he won his championships. I get what you're saying. I mean, he was only there four years, or what was it? Three years. He no, won, three. Yeah, he was there three, three, three years. Because he got right, he, right. right. He got yeah. hurt the third. He was only there three years. I get it. He oh, won it, there. If but, it's but, not the Warriors, it would have to be okay. Right. It can't be anybody else. But I'm just saying, like a player of that uh, ilk, and I know Shaq played for a lot of teams, but he won three with the with the Lakers, him and Kobe, and 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 he has four. I mean, he had the one for my, Miami, but he's obviously a Laker for what they did, right? Uh, Kobe and Shaq together. Yeah, that that would that's, be that's when, obvious. You know. We remember Orlando. Uh, he was so great, right, even though they didn't win. But, yeah, it would be a Laker. Yeah, it it's a, a Laker. Laker. Uh, but but it, I just think Kevin Durant, it, his resume is messy, not from the playing standpoint, Chris, because he's a great player. He has all the things you talked about. Sixth all-time scoring average. That, that's nothing to sneeze about. Right. Uh, eighth all-time. But if you want to nitpick about his legacy, you could nitpick. How many championships would he really have if he didn't go to Golden State? Maybe he doesn't win any. Rob, it's very positive. And I'm not saying this for sure. He is a phenomenal player, probably a top 20 player all time. Most people, I think, would say 15, that. 15, 20, right? Yeah, yeah, in that range. Um, but it is very possible, and we don't know, so we don't need to spend too much time speculating on it. You're not crazy to say he he – Mike, he he doesn't have a ring if he doesn't go to Golden State. I, I, I think he's played it, a lot of years elsewhere with great talent. Don't forget they had and Harden, never gotten over the Harden and Westbrook. They were all together, right? And, and they were young. I, they're very young. They went we to the that. finals, and and if LeBron did follow him in Game Two, who knows what would have happened? You remember that it didn't get called. 
Yeah, I mean, I think Miami still they won in five. No, right? but I'm just they, saying so they probably win that series. They won but, game one, and then there was a foul at the end that of uh, that didn't get right. called. That's all. I'm but saying. yeah, I mean, he had some great teams in OKC, but just couldn't get over the hump. It's very possible, Rob, that had he not gone to Golden State, we talked about would they have won without him. It's just as you know good of a question: Would he have won without them? He may have ended up like a Charles Barkley or Carl Malone, all-time great players, but no rings. Rob, I, look, I think that Kevin Durant is celebrated as he should be. He's an all-time great player, but he's not on the LeBron, Michael Jordan level, Magic Johnson level. And there are some out there that might say, even though Kobe is viewed generally as a top 10 player of all time, I got him in my top 10. There are those that might try to argue Kevin Durant was better than Kobe. But I think, Rob, when I look at the list of top players kind of over Durant, they all had something else. Durant is a scorer. He's a shooter. He's not a great defender. He's a good defender. He's not a bad defender. He's not a great defender, not a great rebounder. Hasn't won a ton. Um, is it incredibly charismatic off the court? Style of play is beautiful because he's such a, you know, he's he's a long, you know, seven-footer who's got a silky smooth jumper. So that's nice. But listen to these names. Michael Jordan, I, I, I won't even comment on Jordan and LeBron. Because they're in the GOAT conversation. Kareem, in the GOAT conversation. Right, those, those three without question. Right, 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 right. Magic, I mean, Rob, Magic and Bird, we can throw them both in there. They saved the game. Magic was, heck, you could argue Magic had the best-looking game ever. He wasn't as graceful and high-flying as Jordan and some others, but my gosh, youngins, go Google on YouTube Magic Johnson highlights. No, no, no. Magic. There has never been anybody. I, Rob, the difference between Magic Johnson and the next best passer in NBA history is the biggest gap between the, the top scorer and second, the top rebounder and second. That's my belief. I think Magic is far and away the best passer. It was like he had eyes in the back of his head. Uh, Showtime and Magic. And what he was able to do, Chris, with the passes and the no look and the oh my I could just gosh. remember him like, you know, taking the ball both sides, Chris, and then boom, like, you know, passing. It was it. crazy. It, it was Rob. crazy. Too good. He, he did two good. real no looks. Right. Real ones. I know. Real like he's looking the other way. He ain't kind of glimpsing the way he's gonna throw it. None of that. I mean, phenomenal. So that magic had that bird magic, we know saved the and, game. And and they did save the league. People don't the oh, yeah. NBA was down and out. And they yeah. showed up, and I'm telling you, you couldn't have picked two better guys, a white star in Boston and a showman no, in Los Angeles. Right. Chris, for real. You would think it if was it would have flipped, and right. I'm not saying it wasn't. But would it, it, was, would yeah, it have it been the same perfect. had it been flipped? I mean, like Magic in L.A. and Hollywood and, and, and Larry Bird in Boston of all places. Dude, it was a, it was a match made in heaven. It was, it, was, it was. It was perfect, right? It was storybook. And look, we've seen storybook endings. LeBron in the 3-1 comeback. You know, we've seen situations where you say, I wouldn't have believed that if you wrote a story like that, right? right. So Hollywood that's script. Magic Bird, right? Kobe, Kobe, whether you think he's better than Durant, most people do, but Kobe's an icon, and not because of the premature death, but, you know, God rest his soul, but, you know, like his style of play, right? He just captivated. He was like a facsimile of Jordan in a lot of ways. And so he doesn't, Durant doesn't have what Kobe has. Steph changed the game. He's small. He's like 6'2. You know, he changed the game. Um, Bill Russell, I mean, 11 rings. Enough said. Shaq was Shaq, Rob. Great rapper. Had platinum selling rap albums. And Chris, you know, he's and, just seven feet tall. But, you know and, what I mean? And during, just, and during his uh, run, he was unstoppable. I, that, oh, yeah. The only yeah. thing that stopped him was missed free throws, Chris. That, that, that's, right. a, that's it. No, it, it was. And what I'm saying, Rob, is that D, Dr. J, um, these guys, Dr. J, whether you think he was better than Durant, I do. 
But Rob, his style, Dr. J was Michael Jordan before Michael Jordan. As far as the artistry, he wasn't quite as good as Jordan, but he's an all-time great. And, you know, he won three rings. I give him credit for the two in the ABA. We give the NBA guys credit for the ones they won when the half the best players in the world were in the ABA. And the ABA so, was a right, good league. It was I, as good. We need to stop. Rob, the last three league. years of, of the existence, they won 66% of the games against the NBA yeah. when they played it, exhibition games. It, it, it was it, a lot it, of them. And it was just, the ABA was just financial. It had nothing to do with the players. Right, it was right. Just financial. I mean, today's NBA looks a lot like the ABA look. With the three-pointer. The only thing the the ABA, the dunking, they let brothers play like brothers want to play. But the only, I think the issue with the ABA, Chris, really, I'm gonna be honest, why people don't take it seriously, is that red, white, and blue ball. Like the ball was, because it doesn't look like you (laughs) know what I mean. One of those as a kid, that was the ABA ball, right? Um, Yeah, it looks like a circus ball, Chris. Like, Like not a real game. You see what I'm saying? Oh, these dudes. There was something off the court. It was something about their personality, something about their style of play. Their larger-than-life, charismatic personality. They all had charisma. And some would say, oh, Iverson gets more love. Nobody thinks Iverson's better than Durant, all right? But Iverson, Rob, was a cultural icon. I I think Durant gets the love that he should get. I mean, I I do think... The way he won his championships, Rob, may rub some people the wrong way. You know, I never killed him for it, but it's true. He went to a team that was had won a championship already, won 73 games, the most ever the next year, and came within one game of winning it again. That's not even to mention they beat his team. But you know what I mean? Like, one, they were one game away, and I think some people look at it like, I mean, whether you think they would have won it without him or not, I think people say any really good player that you added to them, they probably win it because well, they were he, so close he, anyway. But he was a big part. There's no doubt about it. He was beyond it. a big part. Right, he was the right. best player. Uh, but, and but I get I, but that. I, but, I, but I do you think. You know, it still was they yeah. were really close without him, and I had already won. I, I think I think it, you know, when you have like a Clyde Frazier and great, a great players who are kind of frowning on it, you know what I mean? I, I, yeah. I think that's where – he kind of, um, you know, there's a little shine taken off of him. That's it, a little. Yeah, I mean, do you think he gets, and we're about to go to the listeners, but do you think he gets, I mean, Dwayne Wade, he's better than Dwayne Wade, I think. Oh, I, I think he's so, He's arguable. I mean, some would argue because Dwayne, you know, did lead a team to a championship. He had Shaq, and Shaq was still 20 and 9 at that point. But, um, I mean, I think he gets the love. Wade's game was obviously more exciting but right that level Barkley he's that level I mean he's one so you put him ahead of Barkley and Carl Malone in rankings yeah but I still think but, I think he's just I don't get I don't think he gets to total love I think he that he's under under what his resume says Chris I mm. think he's under what his resume says your turn to weigh in on Kevin Durant is he underappreciated Brandon in Charlotte. You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What up, B? Hey, what's going on, guys? How y'all doing? Doing great. Great, man. How are you? Good. Love the show. Love the show. Thank hey, you. I, I completely agree. Kevin Durant is between 15 to 20 somewhere. Uh, he can move up, I think, if he could lead a team to a championship on his own. I agree. That's the only way he could move up. Like, had he won a, champ- had he won a championship in Brooklyn or something, then he would have – his stock would have been totally different. Absolutely. Right? Oh, yeah, absolutely, definitely. I think most people agree with that, Tate. Yep. Thanks, Brandon. Appreciate it. Go ahead. Rob, Rob, there's no way, no how, that, that Kevin Durant is better than Kobe. No. Did, did, no you didn't, did you say that, I, Rob? When did I say that? No, I know. I just like to oh. say how you say that. No. Oh, no way, no how. I, oh, I, I mean, got hey, you. I got you. Some people have Kobe and the GOAT. Discussion. Yeah, I that's don't. all the uh, people yeah, from I, LA who are really closet yeah, Michael mean, Jordan. Some fans. players, you know, some. No, they like my I like players, him. but but Shaq, but nah, what, he's not. He, 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 come on, I mean, Chris, I, I just I don't think he's in the goat conversation. No, nah, nah, he really is. Nah. Uh Andre in Massachusetts, you're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What up, Dre? What's going on? Thank you for taking the call. Listen, Kevin Durant may think he belongs in the GOAT conversation, but his resume and his actions don't merit such membership. And that's really his 
decision. It was Kevin Durant that decided to go to a team that won 73 games and win his championships there. As others have said, he was not driving the bus. He was on the bus. And he decided to leave that team to go to play with a mercurial superstar who wasn't there when he needed him. And so some of the prime years of his career were then uh, spent in Brooklyn, uh, you know, without competing again for a championship. And now he finds himself in a situation in Phoenix where he has two superstars, one of whom uh, is Bradley Beal, uh, who hasn't played many games this season. They don't have continuity, and they're not going to be championship favorites. So in terms, you have to win, and you have to lead. And Kevin Durant, in his play and then his actions where he's gone, he hasn't achieved that, so absolutely not. He's not in the GOAT conversation. And if it angers him, like a young Michael Jordan, and Michael Jordan throughout his life, then get upset and do something about it and win some championships. Thank you for taking the call. No, uh, uh-huh. that's, I mean... He said it, Rob. I, I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, that's spot on. Chris in New York. You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What's up, Chris? Hey, guys. I love the show. Thank but, you. Um, I want to say Kevin Durant is heavily underappreciated. I think he's the mm. second best player of all time. Oh, and second of all Hold time? On, second to who? Jordan? LeBron James. We are done with the Kevin night. Durant is better than Michael Jordan. Yes. Kevin Durant is a seven foot sniper who can shoot from thirty, who has a handle. First of all, he doesn't shoot he shooter. doesn't shoot from thirty. He does, let let's okay. He doesn't shoot from thirty. He actually should take more three pointers. Secondly, with physical defense, as we saw from Jason Tatum a couple of years ago in that series against Brooklyn. He turned the ball Brooklyn over like Boston. crazy. He couldn't oh even gosh. get a shot off. He had trouble getting the ball up the court. And and I mean, Kevin Durant is great. I'm not gonna take anything away from him. But to say he's the second best player of all time is absolutely Rob. What? Meshuggah. It is crazy, Chris. Meshuggah all nuts. day. There's no way, no how he's the second best player. No doubt. Caleb, in Cincinnati, you're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What's up? Hey, Chris and Rob. Thanks for taking my call. First time, long time. Love the show. Thank you, buddy. We appreciate yes, it, Caleb. We appreciate you. Absolutely. I, uh, uh, as far as Kevin Durant goes, um, first, Chris, you said uh, nobody's saying Allen Iverson's better than Kevin Durant. It's unfortunate that we haven't been able to see Kevin Durant and one of his teams put it together for long enough to actually see him be able to do that. The wheels started falling off in OKC before that could happen with Harden leaving. Uh, but I think uh, something that you guys actually said uh, about him going to Golden State he went to the best team, but I, I don't think it's highlighted enough that he was still the best player on that team. No, so, I think most people recognize that. People, at that yeah, yeah, right. People give I mean, him credit. He was, yeah. and he won the, the, the two final MVP. Nobody's taking that away from him, but still there were people who said, well, I mean, they had already won a championship, and, man, this was like the rich getting richer, right? And, right. and they've discounted it a little bit. Some people have, have have made it like well, Steph and those guys too, Chris, take a little from away from them. Right. And, Rob, you know, it's similar to what LeBron did. I, I think Durant's was even, you know, even easier, if you will. But what, what may have saved LeBron, ironically, Rob, from kind of the same views as Durant gets or same perception is that he lost his first one in Miami. So remember, like, everybody thought it was going to be easy championships. Oh, man, that, that you know, that's not going to mean anything. And then they go out and lose, even though it was LeBron's fault. They lost that first championship. So it gave it, Rob, the, you know, when they won the year after that, it kind of was like a bigger achievement. You know what I mean? They had They just won the first year and the second year and the third year. People would have thought... People may have felt about those rings the way they feel about Durant's. And so I think that in a funny way, that may have actually helped LeBron out. Our next guest is a former NBA veteran playing in two NBA finals. Now a Fox Sports Radio NBA analyst, our man, Kerry Kittles. Kerry, how Kerry, are you? Kerry, what up? What's going on, fellas? What's happening? I know Kerry's like great. a little shocked that Chris is on the show, aren't you? <laughs> he's I was going last week, a, we had Kerry. No, I'm just playing. Thank I mean. you, Kerry. <laughs> Kerry got my back, man. All right, I'm just saying. 
Carrie, we were just talking about Kevin Durant. I, I, you may be aware last night he passed yep. Shaq and became the eighth all-time leading scorer. And mm-hmm. we were wondering, just kind of talking out loud about is, is Durant underappreciated? Rob thinks he is. I don't really, but I, I do. I do feel like people look at those two rings just as, hey, man, you went to a 73-win team that had already won a championship. And they were people think they were easy. How did you? I mean, your era guys weren't doing that. So how do you and maybe some of the guys you still talk to from your era? Did you, do y'all look funny at those rings, or at least what he did uh, when he went there, or what? I mean, I, I think you'll find some players that will, and some players, some former players that won't. Some, I, I think for me personally, I just appreciate his brilliance. As, a, as an elite scorer, consistently, um, you know, I, I think what was it like? How many years he averaged over twenty five points? Um, so yeah, I, and, I, and I think the championships, right? He earned it, right? I mean, I, I don't care what you say about he did earn he, it. He won the two MVPs, he was the best no doubt, player on no those doubt. Teams. Yeah, he, he, he earned it. It wasn't like he went out there and he just like rolled their coattails and got championships. Like he he, he dominated in, in big games. He won those MVPs of those finals. So. I, I think he he earned he, he rightfully earned those titles. And you listen, all these guys that win titles, they usually besides Joe Kitchen and and, and and even maybe even uh, Giannis, all these guys win with with, with great sidekicks. So you know, I, I'm not one to dismiss his achievements. Hey, hey let me ask you this: uh, JB Bickerstaff uh, from the Cavs had uh, you know, there's a big uh, Shohei Otani story with his interpreter and gambling and sports. <laughs> Yeah. Carrie, you know the sports leagues are in bed now with the gambling outlets and the uh, handicappers and all that stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. But Bickerstaff was saying that the stuff that he gets uh, is vile and that fans now take it personal because they have money on the games. You know what I mean? If you don't cover yes. or or things like that. Do you hear that? Like like the players are now saying like the, the, the stuff is, is so vile because people are so mad, not that their team lost, but because you didn't cover. You, is this yeah. going to be a problem? I think it can be. I did, I did, that was my first time hearing about it being to those extremes where fans are yelling at coaches, telling them don't take out the players <laughs> so they can cover the, so they can right. cover the spread. That's crazy. That's crazy when I read that. So um, is that where we're at now in sports? Right with the betting and 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 the passion of fans and their livelihoods at stake. Like he mentioned that, right? Like these guys are. This is their rent money or mortgage money that they're betting. Yes, yes. And so now, what's going to be security measures to, to take for for not only coaches, but what about the players? The guy goes cold, misses a free make, throw, something. Right, missed a right. couple of free throws late in the game. Now they don't cover the spread, and now these guys are are, are, are ticked off. So. It, it, it can be a problem now, and I think the league needs to address that for sure. You obviously played for the Nets when they were in New Jersey. You were associated with the team when it was in Brooklyn. But the team, you know, right there, the Knicks finally got something going. Um, mm-hmm. How good do you think they're, and they're still banged up, if they can get healthy or even just get some of their players back for the playoffs, how far do you think they can go or – to me, they kind of look like that typical Thibodeau team that plays so hard in the regular season. They win maybe more than they should, but come playoff time, they might not have that extra level to go to that some of the more talented teams do. Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree with that. I mean, I, listen, I, I think uh, conference semifinals is a, is a very good season. If they could somehow make it to the conference finals, that would be an exceptional season, but I mean, look, right. are they better than Boston? No way. Are they better than Are they better than Milwaukee? No way. And if you know, if Embiid comes back, can they beat the Sixers? I don't think so in the series with Embiid in it. So, um, but wow, can he? The, the coaching job that he's done with the role players and, and how they've been able to play with the changes they've made, OG, and and now you see Divincenzo stepping his game up. So they're a real threat in the East as far as challenging those teams, but I don't think they can beat them in a, in a series of seven games. But I, they will be competitive in the, in the, in the uh, postseason. I can tell you that. Yeah, uh, there was. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the Clippers, the recent Clippers, 
Is there a reason for concern, or is this just a rough patch? Because at one stretch, well, I think they won 18 out of 21 when they were really rolling. Uh, where are you on the Clippers? Should we take a pause, uh, wanna, we take a pause wanna, on them or not? <laughs> I want to get on board with the Clippers. I really do. And I, I just don't see it, guys. I, I think that wow. age is going to be a factor. The injuries. I mean, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, they can't stay healthy. I don't know what it is. I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen anything like it. Those guys just can't stay in the lineup. And they've been trying to play together. And, you know, look, they've been going against the grain with with the whole uh, load management stuff this year. They've been trying to play them more minutes. But they can't stay healthy. And and Harden, listen, Harden wants to get paid, right? (laughs) This this, This is his last opportunity. And he's been playing well. He's been playing really well for them. But I, I don't see them as a real threat in the West. I'm sorry. I, wow. I just don't. I don't. Terry, let me ask you this, because you mentioned Denver and Milwaukee. You said Giannis and Jokic. Maybe they didn't. When yes. they won their rings, they didn't have that, like, Hall of Fame-type sidekick. But yes. you were in an era when, you know, before this whole super team that LeBron kind of started. And I look back, you know, when Jordan was winning rings, you know, Indiana had Reggie Miller. Phoenix had Barkley. Uh, Malone and Stockton in Utah, but teams had one or two. Yeah, Ewing with the Knicks. They had like one or two stars. And a lot Mm -hmm. of people from this era, the younger people look back and say, oh, they only had one Hall of Famer or they didn't have three superstars. And I'm like, that doesn't mean those teams weren't good as good or better maybe than some super teams because, you know, it's how do the pieces fit together Does everybody understand their role? And I think Denver is showing that. Like, they got one superstar, and they're the best team in the league. So can you talk a little to that? Like, is a team automatically better just because they might have three superstar individuals? I mean, let's not (laughs) – Let's not uh, forget about Jamal Murray, all right? Like, so <laughs> right, he's, he's no great, strong. particularly in the playoffs. <laughs> he's legit. I mean, he can put that team on his back at times. So, but, you, but you're right. I, I, I think looking back in the 90s, right, we saw a lot of really good teams that got it done collectively, right, and they competed right. well. I mean, those, those Knicks teams, they were – you had Patrick Ewing in the middle, but they were collectively – a, you know, a, a, a solid core group of guys, and the same with the Pacers and, and, and other teams. But, I mean, look, at the end of the day, those superstars were the ones that really got it done. You had to figure out a way of slowing down Duncan and, and Parker and Ginobili. And that was a tough task for guys. For I mean, we played them in the finals, so I know what it was like. Um, but I, I, I think in today's game, with the court spread out the way it is, it's really impacted – how superstars can really control games. And I, and I think you have to have depth. You have to have depth. And, so, and listen, that's one of the reasons why the Celtics have struggled. When you look at Jaden Brown and Tatum, they can't just get it done with two guys. You're so you're saying now, it's, it's harder for superstars to kind of control the game because of yes. the way the floor spread and stuff? The way the floor spread, the way the ball moves, the passing, the, the, the court. Yeah, the ball is moving constantly. Everybody's touching the ball in the possession. When we played, it was throw the ball into a big, let the big right. go to work. If you if you double them, he sprayed it out. But now you're seeing uh, these the better teams. They have depth. Look at the Celtics. They have five three point shooters on the court at all times. Do you know how hard it is to guard that? Right. <laughs> it's the reason nah, why it's... I think that is extremely difficult with with the space now for superstars to really operate. Before the, when the court was shrank. And you could dig in there and, and disrupt them with your limbs and with bodies. You can't do that now. So it's you interesting. Just- yeah, you yeah. say that because, I mean, I, and we see LeBron's not quite as good as he used to be because he's not as athletic. You know, defensively, he's not as good. But his numbers are the same, and he mm-hmm. can't control the game like he used to nope. when, like you said, nope. when the floor was shrunk and all that stuff. Great stuff. That's our man, Kerry Kittles. 